Hi everyone. Welcome to my first ever tech product video. Some of you watching this might already be subscribers to my YouTube channel and know that my channel is dedicated to math videos that I've created for use in my high school classrooms. I've been teaching math for 14 years now and I decided to try to expand my channel to discuss tech that I use uh, on the job. I am a pretty techie person. I do have a degree in computer science and I am also the tech integration support for my school. But you might be surprised that despite my passion for new tech, I'm not the type to run out and buy the latest and greatest tech the moment it comes out. You will never see me in line at the Apple store waiting for the latest iPhone. In fact, I don't own a single Apple product. My reasons for this could be for a future video. I'm an Android person, always was and always will be. Which leads me to today's video where I want to show you my personal laptop that I use as my daily driver for both personal and professional use. I will also make comparisons to another laptop that I use on a daily basis, which is a nice new laptop provided by my school, an absolutely gorgeous Lenovo C930. I have it right here. This is my new C930. My employer actually let me choose it and I'll share with you the reasons why I, uh, I chose this one. It is a yoga line, which means it does turn into a tablet. But despite this wonderful new laptop, you'll see why my personal one is going to be a surprise. So then what is my personal daily driver? All right, it's not a two year old laptop. It's not even three, it's not even four. Surprise, surprise. It's a 10 year old HP TouchSmart TM2. Look how thick that baby is. Yeah, from 10 years ago. Okay. So at this point in time, hardware-wise, uh, it is equipped with a 512 gig Samsung Evo 850 SSD, eight gigs of RAM running in dual channel mode, an updated Wi-Fi Bluetooth combo card, onboard graphics chips, 12.1 inch WXGA LED touchscreen, and a low voltage Core 2 Dual SU7300 CPU with two cores and two threads. But my absolute favorite feature is a stylus that is housed inside the laptop, right there. It's using super reliable Wacom EMR technology, the same technology that Samsung uses for their S Pens. And yes, I've tested it. The S Pen does work on this laptop. I love that my stylus, just like the S Pen, does not require any batteries. I've had several occasions where a colleague was trying to use their stylus and suddenly their quad A battery dies. And unless you have a spare one lying around, good luck trying to find a quad A battery casually lying around the office. Software wise, it's running 64 bit Windows 10 with fully functioning Windows Hello fingerprint login and includes my usual software that I use as a teacher for creating content such as Office 2016, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Acrobat Professional, and Camtasia Studio Pro. When I meet my students online, the webcam and built-in microphone work perfectly fine with Google Meet. Windows 10 has absolutely transformed this 10-year-old laptop. But the upgrade process from Windows 7 to Windows 10 is not for the faint of heart. After about three months of tinkering with it, I can finally say that my HP TM2 is fit for usage in 2020 and beyond. Now, why am I unable to give up this 10 year old laptop? It's not like I can't go out and buy the latest ones with today's tech. But the thing is, I feel that even 10 years ago, HP got so many things right with this laptop, even when compared to today's technology. First, let's start with my biggest gripe about a lot of today's tech, which is the inability to service them. The TM2 is constructed with service bays here and here that unscrew easily to give access to the hard drive bay, the two RAM slots, and the Wi-Fi card. The battery over here pops out with a latch. Of course, I realized that the trade-off with this is the size of the device. By today's standards, my TM2 is thick and heavy, but I value serviceability over profile. 
When my employer gave me the choice of laptop, I chose the C930 because it has all but one of these serviceable components, namely the non-replaceable RAM. On the C930, all you have to do is unscrew the bottom panel and you can access every component except for the soldered in RAM. In my opinion, any tech with a non-replaceable battery is a disposable item, whether it costs $30 or $3,000. In a year from now, watch the landfills start piling up with all those $250 AirPods whose batteries go dead. Second, the stylus. It never needs batteries. It's housed in a laptop. It feels like a normal pen. It has an eraser top. Compare that with today's pens that, if you're lucky enough to have a laptop that can actually store it, are barely bigger than a toothpick. For example, my C930. The active Lenovo pen, it's about that size. My toothpick, probably about that size. Compare that side by side with the TM2's pen. TM2's pen is a lot thicker. And of course, no eraser on the Lenovo pen. But, of course, the trade-off again is a thicker profile to accommodate a thicker pen. The TM2's pen is as thick as the C930's body. But to never have to worry about my hand cramping or replacing batteries, I'll take the trade-off. The Surface Book gets around toothpick pens by making their thicker pens attach magnetically to the side of their laptops. But as a teacher, when I'm walking around school hallways transporting a laptop to various classrooms, I just cannot live with the possibility that my pen can get knocked off with one hit. Unfortunately, with the C930, I'm stuck with their toothpick stylus, but at least it still doesn't need batteries. Third, the speakers. I remember when Altic Lansing was on many laptops 10 years ago. They may not be the best speakers by today's standards, but they are front firing speakers. That's versus the ones on many of today's laptops that have bottom firing speakers. Whether I'm in laptop mode or tablet mode, the speakers are always facing me. Seriously, why do I want speakers to face my desk or my crotch? Again, to accommodate the front firing speakers, that probably accounts for the TM2's thicker profile. With the C930, Lenovo came up with a totally ingenious way of keeping the speakers facing the user. The sound bar is the actual hinge of the laptop. So the hinge, in other words, the speaker, it turns with you when you convert to tablet mode. Fourth, let's talk about switching from laptop to tablet mode. Or better yet, I'll just demonstrate it. Here's my 10-year-old TM2. Right now it's in laptop mode, and to switch to tablet mode, swivel down. To switch back from tablet mode, up, swivel. Next, let's look at the C930's mechanism. Right now it's in laptop mode, and to put it into tablet mode, I have to lift, spin, and then down. And yes, in case you're wondering, the C930 does not have the raised keys when you turn to tablet mode. I do feel them. And then to switch it back, I have to flip, lift, and then down. I don't know. Which one do you prefer? Is there one that seems more cumbersome than the other? Let me know in the comments. Again, on the TM2, to accommodate the swivel mechanism, obviously required a much thicker laptop. Fifth and finally, the TM2's body is mostly made of aluminum and magnesium. Ten years ago, plastic bodies were still dominant. Of course today, most laptops have some metal in their bodies. My C930 is all metal as well. I just love that smooth, cool feeling of a metal on laptop. 
To end my video, I want to talk about a few things that unfortunately HP probably couldn't do anything about. The TM2 is held back from greatness in 2020 and beyond for a couple of reasons. The single biggest bottleneck is the CPU. The low voltage is fine. My brand new battery actually uh, can still last a solid six to eight hours. But man, I wish I could change the two cores and the two threads. Compare that with today's laptops that contain many more cores and some even a dazzling number of threads. That being said, the TM2 is still more than enough to do graphics work using Adobe Photoshop CS3 and video work using Camtasia Studio Pro 8. But it does draw the line at PS2 emulation, which the C930 can actually pull off quite well. The second bottleneck on the TM2 that really bothers me is the SSD interface. My wonderful new Samsung SSD is capable of SATA 3 speeds, but the TM2 is stuck at SATA 2 speeds. I am forever stuck at 3 gigs per second transfer rate. Now that being said, on its own, the TM2's data transfer rates really never bothered me. But it's only when you put it right next to the C930 that it really becomes noticeable. So there it is guys. My personal daily driver laptop is a 10 year old HP. It's always done what I've asked it to do. And as long as it doesn't give up on me, I won't give up on it. Let me know what you think of my very first product video. I'm looking to grow my skills at content creation. And of course, if you know high school students, especially during our lockdown period, that can benefit from my math videos, please tell them to check out my channel. Until my next video, guys, stay safe, everyone.